This video is the second part of the series that demonstrates how to generate a UN EDIFACT EDI message in C Sharp with the framework EDI component. In the first part of the series, we use the SM Plugins auto generated source code to quickly create this application. That generated this nonsensical PAXLIST EDI file. But in this video, we'll create a more valid one using the guidelines example data. We will also clean up the program to make it more manageable. So let's start with that. One thing I noticed with this auto generated code is that the hierarchical strings are assigned to a variable. I am actually going to eliminate this variable and just enter the string directly to the create data segment method because this string value will not change. This will also remove some clutter from the source code. So for example, these lines of code will become NAD backslash NAD. Notice that I eliminated the loop instance counter from the hierarchical string because it's now required when the cursor type is set to forward right. We can now delete all those lines. Let's do the same for the COM segment in the NAD group. We'll change these strings to NAD backslash COM and then delete these lines. Let me pause the video while I do the same for all the other segments. Okay, that's done. A flow with the auto generated source code is that it creates codes that will generate sub data elements even when they were set to not used. So let's delete those lines of code. For example, in the BGM segment, there are only two data elements specified in the guideline. Element 1001 in composite element C002 and element 1004 in composite element C106. In the source code, here's element 1001 in composite element C002. So let's keep this and delete these extra lines for the other sub elements in the composite, which are not being used. And here's the second element, 1004 in C106. And these lines are for the other sub elements that are not used, so I'll delete them. Let's look at the next segment, the RFF segment. This RFF segment has one composite element, C506, with three sub elements, 1153, 1154, and 1060. And here they are in the source code. 1153 and 1154 are here, while 1060 is here. These two lines in between are not used, so we can delete them. I'll have to do the same for all the other segments, so let me pause the video again while I do that. Okay, that's done. Our code looks shorter now, but fragmented because of all the small procedures. Let us see if we can consolidate some of them. Let's start with our main procedure. We see that it calls procedure packs list area one. Let's scroll down to it. We see it creates segments BGM and RFF and calls other procedures to create loops NAD and TDT. This Paxis Area 1 procedure is also not called from anywhere else, so we can copy all these codes. and move it up to the main procedure by replacing this line. We can then delete the Paxless Area 1 procedure. Let's see if we can do the same for procedure Paxlist area two. 
Let's search for it. Here it is. And we can see that all it does is call another procedure to create an NAD loop. As well as create the CNT segment. Which means we can also move this code to our main procedure. So just like the other time, let's copy it. and then paste it into our main procedure. We can then delete the packs list area 2 procedure. I've also already determined that procedure loop TDT LOC can be consolidated to loop TDT. So let me quickly do that. Copy this. And then paste it here. And then delete this. And procedure loop NAD DOC can be moved up to procedure loop NAD. So let's copy this then paste it here and then delete the procedure loop NAD DOC okay let's see what we've done our code looks less fragmented we had started with eight procedures and now have consolidated it to four Next, let us replace the auto-generated data with the ones from the guidelines example. So starting with the UNB segment in our source code, let's copy the example from the guideline. So here's the first element, which has a value UNOA, the second a value 4, Basically, each of these boxes represents an element, and its value at the center is the data that we'll copy into our program. So let me pause the video again while I do the same for all of the other elements. Okay, that's done. So let's build our program. Good, no errors. Now let's debug and run it. Click on generate. It's done. Let's open the EDI file it generated to see how it looks. It looks a little better. It seems structurally correct, and at least we can make out some of the data this time. But let's validate it with the eFile Manager to see if it has any problems. Here's the eFile Manager. I'll load the EDI file we just created and then the set file. Let's check if the eFile Manager is using the same separators as our program. This is where we had set them. We see that the segment terminator is not the same. So let's copy it into our eFile Manager. Also, the data element terminator was a plus sign, not an asterisk, and there was no repeat separator. And the release indicator was the question mark. Click on Apply, then OK. The eFile Manager will validate the EDI document before it opens it. As you can see from all the errors listed here, this EDI file still has some issues. So in our next video, I'll show you how to troubleshoot the problems and correct the errors.